organize your PA programs, um, basically how to search your prereqs and how to align the prereqs expect, expected of you from the PA programs with your Fresno State classes. And we're also just gonna be showing you how to do research on PA programs, finding some of them that match your own values and just finding, making a list so you can start getting an idea on which schools you wanna to apply to when you do decide to apply. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Um, we have a template set up for you guys in our Google Drive, and we're gonna go ahead and share that with you guys so you guys can fill it out on your own. Um, we're not gonna go through like a whole entire list, but we're just hoping we can get you guys started with about maybe hopefully two or three schools. But yeah, we're just hoping you can get a chance to see what schools you're interested in from today. Um, and before we go on, um, just so you guys know, these are our last, um, last meeting we discussed that we updated our meeting. We are meeting on a monthly basis now. So um, our meeting dates are right here. So if you guys are looking at the document, you can go ahead and feel free to write this down in your calendar because these are the next dates for the next upcoming meetings. Um, if you guys are still interested in volunteering with WINGS, um, that's still open. They still have the warehouse open. So feel, feel free to shoot me an email if you want to um, volunteer with them. I can give you more information about the organization and the times that you could be available to go volunteer there. Um, and also just remember to fill out the attendance sheet so we can keep track on who's here and so we can just know that you guys were here for the meeting. So make sure um, at some point during this time you guys fill out the attendance sheet. And also, if you haven't already, fill out the HCOP pre-professional survey. Very, very important. And if you want to make sure you're getting access to your resources, especially for internships, for volunteer opportunities, for application cycles, it's very important that you fill out this pre-professional survey. So um, when you get a chance, make sure you fill those two sheets out. And if you haven't already, join our group me, follow us on our social media platforms. And if you guys haven't visited the website yet, it's constantly getting updated and it, there's been a co couple cool updates on there. So feel free to check us out on our website as well. And now with that being said, um, let's go ahead and get started. Let me get um, the PA school copy and let me post it in the chat. Um, would that be, would that work? We will be able to, um, they should be able to access it, right? Yeah. They should okay. be able to see it and then make a call. Got it. Okay. Let me grab me. Oop, never mind. <laughs> Let me go here. Wow. Um, should do you guys want to break it break out into rooms first, or do you guys want me to show where the template is at first? Um, show them the template first and then okay. 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 It might be easier if you show them from the website. Oh, that's right. Sorry. I and had they can the link. Yeah. There we go. Oh, okay. Thank you, Brittany. All righty. Here we go. And here's our. It's for this one, right? Does it matter which one or which one are we going to go on? Um, the middle one is like a bit more basic. And then the third one is a lot more detailed and it already has like the names of the California schools. So I guess it just depends on how in depth they want to get with their templates. Okay, so um, you guys can access this all on the resources tab on our club website. Um, so as Brittany stated, they have a California template um, if you guys are interested in applying to your California schools. And, but we do have a basic template that can apply to out-of-state and in-state schools as well. I'll go ahead and um, post, the, post it in the chat so you guys can access it. I'm um, looking at the chat. It says the attendance sheet doesn't let you submit a new form. Huh. I wonder what's up with that. Um, if the attendance sheet isn't working for you, um, we'll just um, take a note of who's here just off the Zoom meeting since we are recording and we'll just um, still tally you guys down for attendance. But um, if you guys have already got the link, go ahead and feel free to make a copy for yourself. Um, it's going to be your own personalized copy and it's going to be your own school. So just make sure you make a copy for yourself so um, nobody else is like on your sheet, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some of the features we have on our template, um, we have the names of the schools, where it's located. Um, you can input the link to the website list your prereqs, how many letters of recommendation and PCE hours are expected of you. So all of this is just basic info that you should look at when you're applying to PA schools. And this is gonna be really helpful um, with you when you're planning on, if you're planning on plan, applying soon, it'd be good for you to start organizing it. And it'd be great for you to get your prereqs in check. 
just so you know that the classes that you're taking are aligning with the PA school of your dreams and you want to make sure those prereqs are aligning with their prereqs. I also, um, if you guys want to take a picture, um, I'll also, I can also upload it to the thing, but I have a list here. Can you guys see it? No? Uh, no. Okay, let me try it again. Mm -hmm. I have a list of prereqs here. That's, that was provided to us by um, Dr. Larry Riley. And it's basically um, just a generalized list of, list of prereqs that are expected by most PA schools. Um, keep in mind, um, just depending on the ones that you wanna apply to, some of them might require more classes. Some of them might require more courses in chemistry, for example. Um, but this is just like a good generalized list provided from the pre-PA advisor on campus um, that you should be looking at when you're um, taking your classes. So if you want to take a screenshot of this, um, I'll upload it to the chat as well so you guys can refer to it um, when you guys are planning for your classes next fall. Um, or if you want to take a class during the summer, this is a good list to go off of um, when you're taking your prereqs. But yeah, um, once you guys are um, done making your copies, um, send a like to the Zoom thing and we can get started with our breakout room so we can start researching and we can start finding the schools that are right for you. Oh, we have one thumbs up. One thumbs up. <laughs> Excuse me. Awesome. We got two thumbs up. Um, Jesus, Connor, Luz, and Jasmine. Um, when you guys are ready, just send a thumbs up when you guys are done, and then we can get started. Awesome. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing now. Um, if you guys need the link, remember it's in the chat and I'm gonna go ahead and break us out into rooms so we can get started. Yes. So we're gonna just do two. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open the breakout rooms. Um, Veach and Veach, I believe it looks like you are. I'm not seeing Ish. Are you in a room? I'm not seeing you pop up on here. We'll, we'll find out right now. But I'm gonna go ahead and open the rooms. And let me move up here. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, cool. I think we should be good now. Oh. Hello, guys. Hello, hello. And I think Melina might join me because she might not be speaking that much because of her voice. So she's going to join me and uh, I think I'll do the most talking here. Just gonna wait. Where is she? Is she coming? Let me text her, hold on. Oh, there she is. Wait. Okay. Alrighty. Um we have Lizalina, we have Viviana, we have Connor. All right. Um, should we like kind of like reintroduce ourselves or? Yeah, sure. Um, feel free to turn your guys' camera on. Um, since it's a lot smaller, it's going to be a lot more personalized. So we'd love for you guys to just chat with us so we can all, you know, compile the list together. Yeah. I mean, like, you don't have to, but it would be nice. <laughs> Just so that we could see your face. Um, but I guess I'll start first with the introduction. Um, so my name is Beach Vane, but you guys can all call me Beach. It's just easier to remember, I guess. Um, I am a non-traditional uh, pre-PA student. Non-traditional meaning 
uh, I went into undergrad as a non-science major. Um, so like I, I went into undergrad. At first, I was a computer science major. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, I failed my first computer science class. I was like, nope, this is not for me. And then I spent about two years just experimenting, seeing like, you know, like what kind of classes I will like eventually like. And turned out like, you know, I enjoyed doing art. So I declared myself as an art major and graduated with my art degree last year of spring 2020 uh, with an emphasis in animation actually. Um, but yeah, so I am a non-traditional pre pa student. So now like I'm taking all my science prereqs, you know, for PA school. Uh, I recently completed my sequential classes of anatomy and physiology, um, finished Chem 3A and all that. Right now I'm, I'm on my way to like biochemistry and all that good stuff. So yeah, I'm starting basically from fresh. Thank you, Beach. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Melena. Um, I currently have a start up. Um, if you guys are having a hard time understanding me, um, just let me know. But um, I'm a kinesiology major and I'm minoring in public health. I'm in my third year right now and I started taking my prereqs last semester. So I'm still um, looking to take them while taking my minor classes. And yeah, um, I'm re currently um, on my own journey. I'm doing my healthcare experience, my patient care experience, and I'm just starting to take my prereqs. And I'm, I've been um, looking into schools and I compiled a couple of California schools already and a couple of out of state. But yeah, I'm excited to be here with you guys. Hey everybody. So once again, um, just kind of how the office presents themselves. I'm the current treasurer for the club. Um, current bio major as well at Fresno State. Um, I'm in my junior year, so I still got about a year ahead of me. Pre pre as well. Um, but yeah, aside from that, I'm just really working on my pre now and not really focusing on you know again those uh, patient care hours that you know everybody desperately needs. But on that topic, I do got a couple of announcements in regards to that. So. Um, just because like right now it's scribe season. I'm not sure you guys are aware of that, but like um St. Agnes and no CRMC, um, they're opening up the scribe, scribe applications. So mm -hmm. if you guys are interested in that, um, I'll attach some links later on. I'll broadcast that to everybody. But yeah, uh, I have a question. What, is it uh, one of the members that informed me about the opportunity? Because a member informed me about it and I just like totally forgot about it because I was mm -hmm. supposed to like uh, relay the information to you guys. I just forgot because I was just too busy. Okay. No, it was actually through me, Mentor. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so I learned about the CRMC one from Mentor, mm -hmm. and then the pre P, I mean pre Med Club at Fresno State. Um, sends out like a mass email. And I'm part of that as well, so mm -hmm. I got their email from them. But yeah, if you guys are interested in that, whether it be in the officers or the members, um, yeah, feel free to let me know, and I'll probably announce it later on too. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little side note, like it would like if, you, if most of you guys I know most of you guys are like freshmen, sophomore, juniors. I think it would be great if you like start doing your patient care hours right now. You don't want to wait until like after graduation because then like it's just going to be like a hassle for you. So it's great for you to start accumulating your hours now. So like by the time you graduate, like you already have like, I don't know, three, four thousand, which will make you like a really competitive applicant. So I think it will, it will be really beneficial for you to start now if you can. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, very true. Um, I'm going to go ahead and have you guys introduce yourselves now. Just go ahead and give us your name, your major, and where you're at on your PA journey so far. If you guys don't want to talk, you can type, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> okay, I'll start. Um, so my name is Lucelena Elena Martinez, but people just call me Nena. It saves breath. Um, this is my second semester, so I'm a freshman at Fresno State. I'm a bio major with a minor in Spanish now. Um, that's pretty much it. I barely got into the club like last month, I think, after talking with my counselor because I switched from pre-health major because I wanted to be a nurse to now a bio major because I really want to be a PA now. Amazing. Yeah. Let's go next. I can go next. Um, my name is Viviana, but people call me Vivi, and um, I'm a bio major, and I'm technically in my, well, this is my fourth year already, but I still need one more year to finish all my prereqs and my bio um, major prerequisites. So 
I'm almost done, but I'm not there yet. And I still need to do my um, clinical hours. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You're, yeah. you're practically halfway there. You just got to get your healthcare experience. Early, out. early congrats to you. <laughs> yes. um, hi guys, I'm Connor. So I'm actually at the beach right now. So if you nice. can't hear me, uh, sorry. But um, yeah, I'm a second year. Um, I'm a kinesiology major and just working towards getting my uh, prereqs done. And uh, I want to work as a scribe in the fall to get my patient care hours too. So I'm looking to start that too. That's awesome. We love the dedication. But you're at the <laughs> right. Right. We love it. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so thank you guys for sharing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, if you guys want, um, how we wanted to do this was um, we're going to basically go off the template. But of course, you guys have your own. So feel free to follow along with your own. Um, what are you guys looking into so far? Um, I know, Vivi, you're, um, looking, you're looking at your fourth year now. Do you guys want to stay in California? Do you guys want to go out of state? Um, what's it looking like for you right now at the moment? For all of you guys, yeah. Like, are you guys looking to branch out of this out of, out of California? Or are you guys like strictly just want to stay within California? Preferably California, but I know it's better to branch out into mm -hmm. out of state just in case. Yeah, of course. Um, I know some, even some of our officers are um, wanting to stay local to California. So there's nothing wrong if you want to just stick with California. There's a lot of programs here to choose from. Um, if you guys want, um, I can provide you guys if all of you guys are so far like the majority of the schools that you want to look into are in California. I can give you guys a compiled list of all the PA programs in California. So let me go ahead and find that link first and then I can send it to you guys right now. Yeah, I understand that some some of you guys might have like, you know, family like situations going on and you you just felt uneasy having to like move out of state, you know, being like a thousands of miles away from your family. So it's understandable. But at the same time, you gotta think about um, you know, if you don't really branch out then you're kind of limiting yourself um to like the different options that you might get you know so mm -hmm. yeah yeah I know it can be a little intimidating to think mm -hmm. about leaving home and especially if you've lived in the Central Valley your whole life it can mm -hmm. be scary but I promise you like there's probably other PA students from all over the country mm -hmm. you know that might be in your cohort so you know you guys are all going to be in there together um, oh, okay. I'm gonna send. Go ahead and send you guys the link. It's all in the. It's in the main chat. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and click on it, and then um, once you guys open it, let me know um, what school interests you, and then as a group we can go over it and just see the prereqs that go over it, and maybe you guys can add it to your list. Since I have it open, I'm going to go ahead and just like share my screen on my, my end as well. So this is what it should look like, the link I provided. Um, as you can see, they did a good job on organizing it, um, alphabetical order. Um, it's There's a lot in the Northern California area and there's some in the Central Coast area and especially in Southern California. Um, but yeah, this should, there's actually quite a bit in California compared to a lot, a lot of other states. So there is a lot to choose from. So if you want to stay in California, there's plenty of schools you can apply to. Just a quick question for you guys. Do you guys know what provisional means? Like when, is, when a school has provisional uh, accreditation? No? It, well, basically what it is, it, it means um, that the school, like it's kind of like being put on probation, but not really. So like at the moment, the school is not really meeting the standards of um, what is it, like the APA? So uh, they basically give the school a provisional status. So once it comes back around to the time where they um, get recertified, basically, um, they'll get, uh, I guess, tested again to see if they, met, they meet the standards of APA. And if they do, then they'll receive full accreditation again. So it doesn't mean that you should like stay away from that program. Um, like even if you apply to that program, you still get in. Like. You can, even if the program loses its accreditation, you can still like sit and take the, um, what is that board exam for PA call again? I forgot, but yeah, you can still sit and, and uh, 
finish the program and take the exam and pass your board and receive your uh, license. Yeah. So don't limit yourself to, uh, you know. On that topic of provisional though, um, it does depend on the school. So for example, um, Marshall B. Ketchum, the one you see right here to the right in the M. And there's another one that's called um, CSU Monterey Bay. Those two are provisional, but for different reasons. So CSUMB, right? That one's a newer school. So it still mm -hmm. has to go through a couple, I guess you could say cohorts to get, you know, that full accreditation. Cause you have to see, you know, how they train them and like how well they do on the pants exam, which is ultimately the exam that, you know, makes you a PA. Mm -hmm. But in contrast, like Marshall B. Ketchum, um, I believe they were trying to make some type of- um, the Adjustment or something? Yeah. Yeah, they're trying to make them like a, a different like program here in Fresno or something like that. I'm not sure oh, if you heard of the speech, but um, right. basically, yeah, so they were at many people in, but at the end of it, it didn't happen. So there was kind of like a little mix up basically on their part. So it, it made them look a little less credible in that way. So that's why they lost it. So it was kind of like some issue with that, at least. To my that's mind. great information as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, just um, one more thing to add. Um, for some PA programs, um, just for particularly in California, there's some programs that offer dual masters in PA and also your masters in public health. So if you guys are interested in perhaps doing community health outreach or community health education, it's really great um, to, or if you wanna work for a public health agency, um, it's good to have your masters in public health and you could get it done while you're also getting um, your, you know, your masters in PA. And that's specific towards Toro University and that's located in Vallejo, California. So if you guys are interested in um, doing something like that as well, um, it mentions it right here. It's a joint MP MS, PAS, and MPH program. So it's a great way to um, you know branch out and just see, um, you're basically just allowing yourself to have more skills on site and you'd be able to apply your career to many different settings if you do get that. So if that's something you guys are interested in, um, you guys should definitely check it out. Um, but as a group, um, let's uh, like take a look at the list real quick and let's, um, decide on one, you guys can go ahead and pick or whoever wants to shout out the first school that they wanna take a look at, we'll take a look at it as a group. And then if you guys are interested, add it to your um, your template and then we'll show you guys how to go about like researching the site to find all the information you need. Any schools, any schools that are catching your guys' eye, feel free to like, if you wanna send it in the chat, just Say it out real quick. We yeah. can take a look at it. Maybe just shout out a random one. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> like anything, too, if everybody's okay with it, we could always do UC Davis. Um, it's a very staple school that everybody like um really likes, you know, just because oh. like it's um it's one of just those schools, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I there I believe there's somebody in the waiting room. Did they get entered? Oh, yeah, I'll go check it out right now. Okay. Thank oh yes. You. Perfect. All righty. Um, do you guys want to go ahead? Do you guys want to take a look at UC Davis? Send a thumbs up. Are you guys cool with that? Yeah. I'm good at that one. Yeah, that's okay. like one of the most common ones. <laughs> you guys um, see my screen? Actually, um, I think this will be better because I have UC Davis on my PA program. Um, you guys can feel free to reference mine if you guys want. But um, how, oh, this is the other one. That's my copy. So. I wrote, this is what my PA program list looks like so far. Um, as you can see, I wrote down like all of the links. I provided the link um, that sent me directly to specifically the PA program. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll down to UC Davis, if I can find it. It's in here. There it is, okay. So uh, here's the link right here. And so it immediately takes you to the admissions for master's of, pub, of PA, I was gonna say public health, what am I thinking? Physician assistant. And then you can already see that they're pretty organized um, as a whole already and they pretty much have everything front and center for you to see. Um, what you would do if you wanna look at their admissions, they'll give you information. Um, it's especially important to look at this right now because of COVID, they might have different rules. They might have adjustments to their GPA requirements. Usually they have that um, on their admissions requirements, but you can see here, you get a basic idea of what they're looking for in their applicants. So you do have to have a bachelor's degree, of course. Um, they have the minimum 3.8 GPA and a minimum 2.7 GPA in all of your science prereq work. And they have a minimum of a thousand hours. So everything that, that we provided for you in the template, the specific like, um, excuse me, hold on, let me grab my tissue. <laughs> 
Uh, just to add on on the minimum bachelor's uh, degree GPA of a 3.0, I saw somewhere on um, on a prepaid group page on Facebook, mm -hmm. someone that someone else that got exactly the program, the program actually, uh, he specified that um, with that GPA, it's only just your bachelor cumulative GPA. So even if you take extra classes, like apart from your bachelor's degree, um, those extra classes won't be counted towards that um, specific GPA. So um, I think that's a good thing if you guys want to apply to this program. Yeah, and um, just keep it in mind what Beach said. Um, when he mentions stuff like that, um, going back to my tab, I'm going to exit out of this because I don't need it. But um, we have we do have a tab called extra information and it falls after if they accept CASPA. So it's in the M column. That would be a good note to add because I wasn't even aware of that. So it's like um, it's like certain classes won't count towards cumulative. So it's like you can add that towards like little tidbits and little notes that you find out about the PA program that you're looking for. So I'm um, just saying, so you know, this last M column right here um, is for like extra information specific for that um, for that class. So I would add it like right here. Certain classes count towards cumulative. And then you would just leave it like that. But um, yeah, so if, if you look right here, you put the, the link here, you put the GPA requirement, you put the prereqs and they find more of the prereqs listed right here, but they have like all of their, what's good about UC Davis, they have basically all of their basic requirements in the front right here. Mm -hmm. So if you guys haven't taken a look at it, um, just take this time to take a look at it for yourself and add this information to your um, Excel sheet so you can, you know, look into it when you're ready to apply, you already know what they're expecting of you. And one other important detail um, that you guys shouldn't dismiss is that your prereqs, they do expire. So um, you do want to apply as soon as you can. And even if you don't get in, um, just keep on applying. And then if your classes do expire, then you're going to have to retake those classes in order for, it, for them to count towards the school's prerequisite uh, requirements. So do keep that in mind as well. Yes. I know that a lot of schools have like a seven years time frame, but mm -hmm. some do have like five years only. So you gotta be careful with that too. Yeah. And it's also important because of COVID, like classes are diff a little mm -hmm. different now. So you also just have to keep in mind um, what they still, um, there might be maybe like a certain limitation on the kind of classes you can take specifically online. Um, I know they're going to be more understanding, of course, because it, it is a pandemic, but just keep that in mind for some programs too. But yeah, here's just the basic thing. And here are your prereqs. So it really does align um, with the Fresno State list that um, Dr. Larry Riley provided us. So one course in human anatomy, one course in human physio. Um, in this case, you can also take a anatomy and physio combined. So um, Connor, you might know this already. It's bio 67A that would count towards your mixed um, anatomy and physiology series. So um, just like if you guys want to write that down, um, if you guys haven't taken that class yet, Bio 67A and Bio 67B are your um, human anatomy and physiology courses at Fresno State. And then there's one course in chemistry. So that could be towards OCHEM, that could be general chemistry. Um, it's from my own understanding, um, they usually take upper division chemistry courses or like um, inorganic or organic chemistry courses are usually what are expected of applicants. Um, so like Chem 1A, for example, could work, Chem 1B, um, Ochem, um, Biochem. And uh, Chem 3A does not count towards this, just FOI. Yes. Because that's like introductory chemistry and yes. they want like a more, you know, <laughs> upper uh, division chemistry class. So yes. Chem 3A does not count. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's very true. And they also want microbiology, one course in English composition. Um, if you guys are incoming freshmen, this will probably be English 10 for you guys. So if you guys have already taken English 10 and you've already taken human anatomy and physio, um, you're already pretty much going through your prereqs yeah. as it is. And then they, of course, um, they want you to have two courses in social sciences. So that would be like psych and social. <laughs> one class with Thatcher, um, Psych 74 or Psych 75. It's like um, introductory, introduction, introduction to um, psychology. 
um, that usually you can take that within your GE courses. So if you haven't taken those yet, it can be um, upper division or lower division. They didn't really specify whether which ones they take as long as a social science course. I think um, it has to be a general yeah. or no, an introductory um, social science class. Mm -hmm. So like intro to psychology, um, you can even do like some schools would require like a certain type of psychology class. So like, for example, abnormal psychology, developmental psychology. So you got to look into that as well. That is true. Um, if you guys haven't already, um, I hope you guys are just writing a little bit of information down. Um, Whatever is like on your, if this is the school that you plan on applying to, um, feel free. We'll give you some guys time to fill it out a little bit. It doesn't have to be full. If you guys want to just get down the link, feel free. It's for here. And you want to input that to your template. This is what this workshop is for. And the other thing with the uh, English composition requirement, um, I believe English 5A and or 5B also counts toward that. So if you didn't take English 10, but you took 5A and 5B instead, I'm pretty sure that's satisfied for that part as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. And um, for anyone who took AP classes, oh, my voice is very good. Um, for anyone who took AP classes, um, AP scores do not count. Um, mm -hmm. I know I have a human geography score that counted towards some of my credits, but I would not be able to use that when applying to PA school. Um, so if you guys have um, passing over credits from your AP classes, those will not count. And just also keep in mind, try to aim to pass these classes with a C or better, um, preferably higher than a C if you guys can. Yeah. Um, very competitive, keep that in mind. So mm -hmm. although you are taking these prereqs, you have to pass these prereqs as well. But I'm sure you all, you guys already know that. Some schools, just, some schools will be like, if you have a C minus, they wouldn't even take it. Like it has to be like a C. <laughs> Yeah, but I know um, that a state we don't do like plus and minuses, so yeah, they don't do that. So um, for us. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, it looks like yeah. So if you guys even want to look at the tuition, um, if you guys haven't already looked at like certain tuition costs for a PA school, I'm not gonna um, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's very expensive. Um, sometimes people have to take out loans for PA school, so just keep that in mind. Um, if you guys are interested in pursuing this path. Um, be prepared for the tuition. It is expensive. I'm not going to lie to you, but you know, eventually you'll be able to pay it off. They people pay it off eventually, or you could even work for um, certain programs that offer to pay back your loans if you offer, you know, you offer to work with them after you get your accreditation. But like right there, it has that loan repayment option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, like I think some programs you have to work for a hospital for like a certain amount of years. Most yeah. of the time, it's like two to three years only, and then they like either help you pay a portion of your loan or they pay it all off. <laughs> yes that's true but you would have to um it would just depend on what's you know best for your financial situation in specific everybody is different so um if you're not looking into low repayment if you want to just pay it off as you're going along with your career that's completely fine too and that is also an option but um is there anything else that you guys want to take a look at um how to apply they have a basic infographic right here for the timeline as you can see, most of the classes begin in April, and that's when the applications open on CASPA. So UC Davis does a great job on organizing and showing what they expect of their applicants. And it seems very, um, it's very just up, up, up front for you to see. <laughs> Pretty crystal clear. Yeah. Yeah. And just Is to go back on the tuition part, like if, if you're like me, like I don't really mind about tuition because, you know, like if you're investing in your education or like in your future, like it's a great investment. So um, to me, like tuition doesn't really matter that much. What really matters is as long as I get in, right? Yeah. <laughs> so <Yeah>. that's me. <laughs> yeah, I've, because I remember my mom seeing the tuition. She was like, are you sure this is what you wanna do? And it's like, yes, it's of course you're, you're investing in your education and ultimately you're gonna be, it's gonna be worth it in the end. So try not to pay too much mind to it, but still like take a look at it so you know what yeah. to expect. Um, do you guys want me to send the link to you guys? I can send it to you guys direct message if that will help you guys. Um, would you guys want me to do that for you? Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Let me just copy this. Uh, you know how like since we like that one in state school, we should, maybe we should look at like an out of state school as well. Oh yeah, we can do that. Oh, I got a couple of out-of-state schools. Same. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm sending it to you guys um, direct message only because I don't want to like bombard everybody else <laughs> with like everything, but you guys should be able to um, let me know if you guys get it. Just like hit me with a thumbs up. Got it? Awesome. So yeah, just um, on your guys' own time, fill it out. Um, it'll, it's really helpful, especially when you're planning out for the semester and maybe, oh, hi, Natalia. I didn't see you there. Um, how are you? I <laughs> Sorry, really well, sorry, I was only able to join for the first or the second half. So yeah, that's just why I'm you didn't miss my you're, you're good. Yeah, we just <laughs> went through our first school, but let me go ahead and send you the UC Davis link. Um, did you get a chance to make a copy of the template yet? Um, I screenshotted one of your what you were showing. So I'm yeah, I'm like in the process right now of kind of modeling mine after yours. So yeah. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> let me let me also send you since you're already on my direct message, I'll send you a copy of the spreadsheet. So if you can make your own list that's unique to your journey. So I sent that okay. to you the direct message too. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah, I think I no yeah I thanks. All righty. Um so we're good now. Um what out of state schools do you guys want to take a look at? Um, there's Texas, um, there's Florida, there's some in Oregon. There's a bunch. <laughs> yeah, there's actually the number one PA program, I believe, is Baylor. Baylor has a very good, I, that's what yeah, I heard. Baylor, I thought it was Emory. <laughs> um, the, the number one ranking? No, no, I it's think? not. No, it's, it's, um, what's that program that starts with a D? I don't know. Oh, that one. <laughs> but anyways, um, I mean, like we could, I could show them my list because most of my schools are out of state schools. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, most of my schools are Texas and Florida. So mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if you guys are interested in going to Texas. Yeah. Or, but Veach, you can go ahead and share yours. And okay. Because I'm, I think it's really important to show you guys the distinction between California schools and then out of state schools, mm -hmm. especially for the East Coast schools. They kind of expect a little bit different stuff, like especially with GRE. So um, if you're looking to branch out out of state, um, I would say take the GRE just in case. Oh, sorry, I throw. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Um, okay. Yeah. So my list is not that intricate as Melina's, but I'm, um, gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing Beach so you can share your screen. Oh, I thought I was already sharing. <laughs> okay. Can you can you guys see my screen? <coughs> Wait, okay. So mine is basically just catered to myself. Cause um, I put down this, my list of schools and I put down like what, what other classes I still need to work on and complete. And because like I am a non-traditional um, pre-PA student, uh, my GPA, it's not like my undergrad GPA wasn't so good, but like my uh, post-bac GPA is actually pretty well. Um, like right after graduation, like I started to get more serious with my wife, I guess you can say. So like I've been getting all A's after that. So um, and like they like all my classes after graduate uh, after undergrad like they're all like all science classes and you know they're they're harder but I've been able to like maintain A's in all of them. Um, but anyway, so um, but then like with the thing with P schools is that like a lot of them they um average out all the grades that or classes that you've taken in your whole life. Well, like from college and onward. So like um, with that being said, um, because I really messed up in undergrad, like it's gonna take a while for me to like, uh, for my cumulative GPA to really like reach the requirement um, level. So I'm looking mainly at like colleges that require, um, like that look at like my last 60 GPA or my last 45 units GPA, because like I just mentioned, um, my post back GPA is pretty, darn good <laughs> um but yeah so uh one of the schools that i'm looking at is uh university of, of florida so that's like you know other side of the country right um but the reason why i looked at that school was because um you know i feel like if you branch out and like get out of your comfort zone that's the only way that you can really grow right so that's why i chose florida um let me see if I can like, I don't have your website link state, but hold on. let me open, let me search out the website, University of Florida. Can you guys see what I'm doing or? 
Yeah, okay, perfect. So this is their website right here. Um, and then on the tab, you could go under admission. So that's where all the, their requirements will be at. So you would go to requirements. So right here, they look at your overall science GPA, um, which it would be 3.0, that's the requirement. Um, they also look at your prereqs GPA, so all the prerequisites that they require. So uh, anatomy, physiology, micro, general chemistry, stats, medical term, all that good stuff. Um, and they also look at your patient care experience. Um, they do recommend it like about 2000 hours to be considered competitive. Um, and then they also require the GRE. So that's like the, um, the standard, I guess, graduate admission test exam. So they require that as well. Um, but yeah, so you can navigate through their website, um, the degree, degree, degree requirement that you'll need, which is a bachelor's degree, um, prereqs again, and they'll go into details explaining like what classes is, are accepted and what classes are not. Um, they also specify whether they accept AP credits or not. Um, and they do have recommended, recommended courses that you can take. And these courses can up your chances of getting like an interview with them. Um, so they have all these lists down here, uh, epidemiology, uh, physics, all that good stuff, medical ethics. And then down here, they also specify uh, what type of PCE, uh, what type of experiences are considered as PCE experience. Because some people still um, get patient care experience and healthcare experience mixed up a lot, um, but they'll like go into detail explaining like this is how a PCE job uh, is supposed to look like. So that's how you can uh, differentiate like whether or not the job that you're um, in right now would count towards PCE or not. Um, and most schools only look at PCE specifically. So uh, you have to be careful with that. Um, but yeah, so 2000 hours of direct patient care. Um, oh, and they also have like a list of um, jobs that are considered PCE. So like right here, CNA, chiropractor, uh, ER tag, ENTs, all that fun stuff. And for here, see, they'll specify like, this is how a healthcare job will look like, like healthcare experience job. Um, so like pharmacy tech, you don't really interact with patients, right? You just give up meds. Um, so that's not really a consider patient care. Yeah, um, just to add like for healthcare experience, like if you were a volunteer at a hospital, for example, at CRMC, Kaiser, St. Agnes, that's what you would put towards your healthcare experience because you're not mm -hmm. providing care. Um, you're simply just working in a healthcare setting. So that's like one mm -hmm. of the main things just to keep in mind, like when you're volunteering and when you do, like when you're working, say as like a phlebotomist, a CNA or whatever, making sure that when you're logging it, you know how to, you're logging it onto complete different platforms as one as your HCE, one yes. as your PCE. Yes. And I don't know if you guys have heard of this terminology, but um, there's this thing with like, uh, CASPA stuff, you know, where you guys would uh, fill out the applications for your PE programs. Um, there's no double dipping. So if you're um, working as a PCT in the emergency department, for example, um, and uh, you're working closely with a, a physician assistant, you can't count like your, all of your hours as I, you know, you can't just like say that, oh, I, I work um, I got 100 hours of PCE and also got 100 hours of shadowing with this PA. Like you can't double dip like that. Um, what you have to do is you have to split your hours, right? So you can't just count all of this. So you have to do 50 and 50. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, so you got to be careful with that as well. Um, like, sure, like the schools can't find out, you know, but it's good to be like honest, right? Um, yeah. So right here, they'll tell you um, the code that they use for uh, where you can send your GRE score to the school. Um, but yeah, that's basically all their requirements. Um, 
Vivi, I know um, you mentioned you're in your fourth year. Um, have you started looking into taking the GRE by any chance? Not yet, just because I don't know what schools I'm going to apply to yet, but I was looking because I see that some of them do require it and some don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, just depending on like if all of the ones I plan to apply to don't require it, then mm -hmm. I'll see if I take it or not. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, if you haven't, um, if you have Facebook, um, they do have like pre-PA club and it's like anyone who's PA, pre-PA all over the country in the United States. So they, a lot of people sell like GRE studying books. So if you wanna go ahead and like, just look it up on Facebook, literally the pre-PA club, you have, you'll come across a lot of people who are like selling their GRE books and they're, mm -hmm. they don't need it anymore because when they probably already got in. So I would highly recommend um, like start researching, like, you know, just study books you can go off of. Cause I know I'm going to probably have to do that next semester as well. And like that also applies to like the, um, like PA school or interview guides, all those um, like personal statement guides, like a lot of um, current PA students are selling their books. So if you want to get those books at a cheaper price, then it's good to like join the group on Facebook and uh, just like be on the lookout for those. Uh, yes, jump on posts. it because yeah. they go fast. Mm -hmm. um, Most of the time, they do just give it away for free because you know like, they want to give back to their community, right? Because yeah. they oh, yeah. they know like they've been through it all, so they know how difficult it can be. So they want to help out other pre pay students as well. So yeah, that's very yeah. generous of them. Yeah. Um. Thank you, Beach, for sharing your uh, the Florida school. I actually oh, yeah. didn't even know that the University of Florida specifically had one. So oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm gonna add that one to my list. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, are there any other um, California schools that you guys want to go over as a group, or um, any out of state specific schools you guys want to take a look at? Um, we're open to you know research. Maybe you guys might not think you might be interested in Oregon, maybe, and then Oregon ends up being the one that's your is PA program of interest. Um, does anyone want to give us like a random state you guys want us to take a look at? Maybe we can go off that. Um, you mentioned Texas earlier, and I've been looking at um, University of Texas Southwestern. Yes. So if no one else wants to request one, I'll just go for that. One. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to take, take the lead. I have this one. <laughs> I have this one. Let me get it on my. Yes, I'm so glad that someone else is interested in Texas because sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, like most people are like California, which is not a bad thing, but it's like if I were to go to one place out of California, I've always wanted to go to Texas. Same. Yeah. So, oh, I guess I didn't update it, but we can go ahead and just look it up. So UT Southwestern. Yes. So the PA programs, they're a little different. Um, I just noticed like what they expect with like um, healthcare experience and stuff like they are a little different from other like East Coast schools and California schools. So you can see here, um, they let you know, like, yeah, look at see one of the top ones they had to let them know. I like their vision specifically, and I like that their cohorts are very diverse. Um, I value that very much in cohorts and programs and schools in general. I like people that embrace diversity, especially. Um, so their program is actually a 30 month curriculum. So it's um, typically it's like 24 to 26. This one's a little longer than from what I'm used to seeing. So it's like 30 month. So that you know their program goals. And it's mm -hmm. right here. Exceed the US national average first time pass rate on the PA national certifying on the PANTS exam. So that's very good. That just shows that like the, the clinical trials in their didactic year, they're very efficient in teaching their students on how to pass the exam. So that's a good thing. And um, I like that they um, stress that they need to serve medically underserved areas. Um, that's even one of our club mission goals. So that aligns with my own mission as a PA. I wanna be able to serve the underserved. So that's one thing I liked about UT Southwestern. They're still accredited. So you don't, they're not on provisional right now at the moment, but yeah, that's is basically it. And this is their professor. Let's go into um, prereqs now. And then here's a tip, like you gotta make sure that your mission and your goals really align with the schools. Um, that's the only way that you can really interest them and like really sell yourself to them. So you gotta make sure that, you know, both of you guys really aligned with each other. That's, that's important as well. Yes. So they gave you the cost right here. 
Um, they let you know the important dates. So you can see their application deadline is in September and their classes begin typically in May. Um, they do require the, hold on, hold on real quick guys. Let me um, grab my tissue. <laughs> This sucks. I hate having a brand new nose. Like that's like the worst thing. Okay. So you can see here, you have to have a minimum GPA of a 3.0. Um, you have to have your prereqs completed by the time your application is submitted. For competitive applicants, um, even though they say 3.0, um, I looked at their average GPA and most of their applicants have a 3.5 and a higher. That should not discourage you, but that should just, if you're still taking your prereqs, that should um, keep you motivated to do exceed in your classes and especially in your prereq courses and your science coursework. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Okay. Anywho, so I'm looking for, I'm going to be honest with you, like there it is. Okay. I feel like I always struggle with the Texas schools because they're a little harder to navigate than like the California schools. But you can see right here, they accept um, eight credit hours of general chemistry. So that would be about two chemistry courses with the lab including. Mm -hmm. So that, it seems like a lot, but it's like, if you include the lab, it'll, it'll make up for it. So that's two chemistry courses of general chem. So at Fresno State, that would be chemistry 1A and 1B. And then they have genetics, human anatomy and human physiology. Um, that would be bio 67A and B at Fresno State. They also have microbio, four credit hours. Um, keep in mind that's including the lab. Um, they want you to have OCHEM, I believe with the lab as well. I'm not sure if OCHEM, I haven't taken it yet, so I'm not sure if it comes with the lab. But they also expect you to take um, the social science classes, so psychology and stats as well. So um, I just took statistics. Um, I'm taking biostatistics right now. And sometimes biostatistics can count, can count towards your statistics requirement. I know it counts for um, biostats and stats at state count for each other. So if you take one, you don't have to take the other. So um, that's something to keep in mind. A lot of the schools either accept like college algebra or statistics. Yeah. And here are the recommended electives, um, human sexuality, biochem, medical terminology. Um, I highly recommend, um, all of these are great and towards um, improving your GPA and also just giving you a broadening, broadening your horizon with like your medical knowledge and science knowledge. However, I really want to stress that medical terminology is probably like one of the most beneficial like extra class supplemental classes you can take um, mm -hmm. because for some it's like I'm starting to see like a growing trend of it being kind of a requirement yeah and it's especially recommended like you should take it at some point point. Yeah. and if you've already taken like uh, anatomy physiology like that class is super easy like <laughs> yeah you'll, you'll pass it yeah yeah and I believe on Ish Ish Ismail is taking um a medical terminology class but it's in Spanish so if you're even looking and working like um, applying for a program that's especially catering towards like a Hispanic the Hispanic population, it's very good to be, have like you know be bilingual. So if you want to learn Spanish while also knowing your medical terminology, um, you can ask Ish when we go back to the main room what class is that. So if you guys are interested in that, they do have that at Fresno State. And I know that some of you guys might be like paying for tuition yourself or like your parents are paying for you, <laughs> but don't limit to taking your prereqs like just at Fresno State, like you could take your prereqs like elsewhere, even at like local community colleges, that's what I'm doing. And you could save a lot of money um, that way. Or you can even do like online, uh, through online institutions, uh, because mm -hmm. right now due to COVID, like a lot of P programs are like being more lenient now. So they do, some of them do like accept um, online, like even online labs, they, they would accept that as well. So, yeah expand your horizon. <laughs> I have a quick question about the statistics portion. Yeah. So if they don't specify a specific type of statistics class, can is it safe to assume that it's an introductory stats course? Yes. Um, yeah, with that as well, I think as long as that stats, like if you're taking, like, like if the class is from the like mathematics department, then it would count, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Yeah. If you end up, um, because I'm currently taking biostats, I've taken stats as well, but I got a C in it because I was new to it. So I'm taking biostats because one, it's like more related to like the healthcare field. And two, it gives me a chance to improve my grade and statistics in general. I would just, um, they do have an email on here. So if you have any questions about prereqs, people usually get back to you on a timely manner. So if you want to like specify that and you are interested in taking biostats instead and just want to make sure your prereqs are getting accounted for, um, you could still like 
email their admissions officers because they they shouldn't they'll be able to tell you if it counts or not. But yeah, um, these classes have a 10 year expiration. So they're good for about 10 years after you've taken your courses. And yeah, um, pass and fail are not accepted for prereq courses. So if you took a class that's like you either pass or you fail, that won't be counted towards your thing. And yeah. other than that. Some um, schools do... might take passes and they might like convert that to like a like equivalent of a C, for example. Mm -hmm. So you gotta really look for that as well. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Or like uh, credit, no credit, right? There's that mm -hmm. as well. They might equate that to like a C or maybe even a B, yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you guys like me to send you the link for this specific school? Um, are you guys cool with it? Okay, cool. I'll send it to here. Do you guys know if Chem 8 is the prereq for OCHEM or does it specifically have to be Chem 128? Uh, I know that Chem 8 is intro to, like intro to organic, right? something like that, that I don't think that was satisfied for um, uh, like the chemistry portion. I don't think it does. Yeah, it would have to be like a general chemistry course or um, if the school doesn't specify like what type of chemistry it is, most of the time it has to be like a, like a upper division chemistry class. Um, like for example, organic or biochemistry. Yeah. yeah, because some of them, they want like just general chemistry, which is mm -hmm. 1A and 1B, but yeah. it also wants um, OCHEM, but it doesn't specify like it has to be. Oh, yeah. So with that, um, Chem 8 wouldn't count. It has to be like, mm -hmm. what's what's um, organic at state, like 128, right? 128, oh, yeah. 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 So it has to be that class. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Good luck in OCHEM because I still need to take that because yeah. I read chemistry. It's like not my not my strong suit at all. But um, yeah, I hope you guys got a chance to, you know, look into what like the researching part of looking into the PA programs that, you know, are right for you. Um, you know, just keep in mind, like there is a fee when you apply for certain programs. So, um, you know, just keep in mind, like keep track of your schools, um, make sure your prereqs are aligning with your um, the programs that you're interested in. Um, I'm hoping you guys like got a little better idea on how to like organize it because trust me it helps so much especially like when you're planning for the semester say if like you know you're taking most of your major coursework and then you have room for another class you can add a prereq in there that you haven't taken um, it's really good in organ with helping you keep organized and keep tabs on like how far are you in your journey so I hope you guys get a chance to utilize your template um, I hope you guys got a chance to see like a PA program that's like you know, that's something you could see yourself yeah. attending and applying to. <laughs> yeah. You guys, um, before we head back to the main room, do you guys mind giving me like one program that's like so far, like on your mind so far? You can type it down. If you want. Yeah, you can type it. You can say it, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, I like the the Texas one. I never thought about Texas, but I was open to out of state. But that one, that one really. Awesome. My, my eyes a little bit. Yes, awesome, awesome. How about you guys? I'm really looking at Davis right now or um, even Stanford because I'm hoping to do kind of a shorter program, but we'll see. Yes, awesome. Stanford's an amazing program. Yeah. My number one is Davis, but I'm trying to look into the other one for Texas. That one really like stood out to me too. Yeah. That one, that one, um, I haven't really, it's been on my radar, but I think for, I just remember seeing like the mission statement, how they, they're one, a diverse cohort, and then they want to serve the medically underserved. And I think that's super important, especially with PA programs. So yeah, thank you guys so much for sharing. I'm glad you guys got a chance to look into some PA programs, especially out of state. Like that makes me so happy that you guys are able to see what exists outside of California as well. But we're going to go ahead and leave the room and I'll see you guys in the main room. We're just gonna wait um, for the rest of them to come back and we'll probably conclude the meeting after this. Just so you guys have like a number in your head, um, I think there are about like over 400 PE programs 
in the United States. So there's a pretty big pool of schools that you can choose from. So don't limit yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even then, like, um, usually what I love about like a lot of was certain sites, like, for example, like they have like a, a site where it's just all the California PA programs, even for Texas, they have one that's like a, there's like, I believe six in Texas. They're all very great programs. There you go. They're about to leave the breakout rooms right now. But yeah, um, just keep researching, use the template and, you know, apply to as much as you want. And attend the information sessions. Those are very important too. And they've been very great. A lot of paid programs have been doing a lot of information sessions virtually mm -hmm. and mostly for free. So yeah, take advantage of that and get all the information you need, answer all the questions that you have, because it'll probably be, you'll probably get more valuable resource information from the actual source itself from the yeah. admissions officers. Yeah. So yeah, just keep an eye on, on that. And if we come across any, we'll we'll share that with you guys as well. So, yeah, with that being said, there's actually one coming up uh, March 31st. I think it was Michigan State of, uh, Michigan State University. They're, they'll be holding like a webinar um, on March 31st. So, um, that's as much as I can say, because I don't really know like the specific deets. So you have to Google it yourself. And, um, but yeah, I know that they're having one on March 31st. So. Yes. Um, I think everybody's back now. Um, I hope you guys had a good sessions and I hope you guys got a chance to jot down some prospective PA programs that are catching your interest. Um, but we're gonna go ahead um, before we end, do you guys have any questions for us? Um, any concerns, anything? Want to tell us about your day? Now's the I have a final announcement before we end, but if they have a question, we will go with that first. I have a quick question about um, the programs that you were just mentioning. So, where should we keep an eye out for those um, webinars? So, so most, oh. go ahead, Beach. Uh, right. Most of the time, you just got to like keep looking up the different variety of schools and they'll state it on your, their main website. But um, I think, what is that one? Because like, um, I'm part of like a prepaid group. So like, I constantly get like email updates on different webinars that are, are coming up. So with that being said, maybe like, we'll try to update you guys with um, whatever webinars are coming up. Um, but yeah. Yeah, if anything, um, say for example, the, the one we just looked at, UT Southwestern, they had a specific tab that said information sessions. So they probably would provide the dates and like the platform they're gonna use to give out those information sessions. So I think one is just, um, it depends on the program you're interested in and also like utilizing like pre-PA club platforms. So there's one, um, I'll go ahead and add it for you guys. It's um, the pre-PA club on Facebook. And um, I use that a lot, especially like um, for people who are having like virtual shadowing options I'll send that to you guys if you guys do have Facebook, um, but it's really helpful because there's they're basically prepaid students and even um, physicians assistants um, all across the nation providing information for us. So like they sometimes post information sessions and yeah, if you wanna, if you have a Facebook, you can go ahead and keep up with the group on there. And even if you have questions, you can ask the group and a lot of them are great at um, answering your questions and providing really vital information. So let me just find Follow it. our Instagram because I constantly share stuff on there so <laughs> I was about to add to that too a lot of schools do also have PA um, Instagram pages or just social media pages and it's a good way to follow them it's like it's a good thing to do too it's a good thing to do to follow your their Instagram accounts or different social media accounts and they'll keep you updated that way so you know once you're just scrolling through it like you know that's how I kind of sometimes I come across informational sessions or different just things you know regarding the school just through like their Instagram or social media accounts. So yeah, definitely follow those and just check those out and check ours as well. Also, if we come across anything, I will always make sure to shoot you guys an email from our pre-PA email, so. Yes, and um, just like we said before, um, following the, filling out the HCOP survey will allow um, Bilia to send you all information sessions, not just about PA, but also just pre-health in general. So you'll get information from there as well. And if we come across, like Sunny said, if we come across anything, we'll send it to you. But any more questions before we conclude our meeting? Alrighty. Um. So again, I oh, think it's yeah. yeah. 
So Sorry. one final announcement. I know um it's hard to get um this patient care experience in general, like within these times. And you know, it's just hard in general, even if it wasn't we weren't like in COVID times. But right now it's basically um scribe season, like the application is opened up. So if you're interested, I say Angus is opens up the 30th, both for emergency departments, by the way. So um, but yeah, this is the CRMC scribe program that I attached. So it's a link to their just to the application. You just need like a resume, um, kind of like a cover letter, or they call it a statement of intent, just saying why you wanna, you know, be a scribe there. And yeah, just a couple of like transcripts and stuff like that. And you go apply that way. And you know, it's a good way to get that patient care experience, you know. And I guess it is competitive a little bit, you know, because you know, everybody wants to be a scribe, whether it be in like PA, pre-med, you know, so on and so forth. But yeah, I mean, why not apply if you are looking for those hours? And then say, Agnes, I'll update you guys on that via group me when the application does open up. Um, the pre-med club always opens, holds uh, info session on that as well. So if you want to attend that, um, I'm not sure when that is, but yeah, as I said, I'll keep you guys updated via group me. So if you haven't joined, please oh, join that. Fun. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to mention, adding on to what Ish said, make sure you look into his schools and if you're looking for patient care hours, make sure they accept scribing as patient care hours because I know mm -hmm. few schools that don't because it's mainly typing, paperwork, all of that. So it counts as healthcare hours, but they do a lot of schools do prefer PCE over HCE. Yeah. So look into that. And also I know scribing is a lot of hours too as well. Like sometimes they will make you work over shifts or whatever. So make sure it also works with your school schedule because we might be back on campus yeah. next semester. So no, not down talking on scribing. I'm just saying make sure you look into all of that before you, you know, apply and stuff. Just because you do want to know you're not burning yourself out. I think, I think in our next meeting, maybe we should we should talk about like, uh, like, in details, like how a patient care job will look like and how a healthcare job uh, looks like. PCE versus yeah, PCE. yeah. So that way that you guys kind of have a an idea. Idea of what? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we can get some speakers in store for you guys. So um. That's something to look forward to next meeting if you guys can attend. But again, um, thank you, Ish, for sharing that. Take advantage of these resources, guys. It's going to help you in the long run. Organizing your PA programs, taking advantage of your healthcare experience now while you're an undergrad is going to save you a lot of time and then makes it sooner for you to apply as well. But um, again, thank you guys so, so much for coming. Um, I know school's getting tough right now. And trust me, I'm feeling it. And I know it's getting tough. And semester is almost coming to an end, but I really do appreciate you guys taking the time to come speak with us and to come just with your questions in general. Like we really appreciate it. And thank you guys so much. Um, I hope you guys got some valuable information from this. And I hope you guys found a prospective PA program, especially, um, especially for all of you third, fourth years. Um, it's great to start researching now. So yes, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, our next meeting will be on April 20. Yes, twenty third. Yes, April twenty third. Um, if you guys um, want to jot that down on your calendar, or if you guys want to, if you guys forget right now, always just refer to our website, our socials, and everything. We'll constantly keep you guys updated. And yeah, um, anything else before we go? Oh yeah, yes, spring have a break. Great spring break. Yes, have a great <laughs> spring break. Relax. Take some time for yourself. <laughs> Self care is important. All right. All right, guys. Thank again. Thank you guys so much. I will see you guys soon. Meetings are fun. <laughs> you mentioned the oh. um, HCOP survey, but I don't think I was here for that. So, is oh. there a link for that or like? Oh yeah, you got it. Let me get the link and then I can send it to you through direct message. Thank you. Appreciate that. Ah, where to go? So officers will stick around for like an extra five ten minutes. So if you guys have any other questions. If not, enjoy your spring break, guys. This is for the HCOP survey specifically. And um, I know someone mentioned the attendance sheet wasn't um, working. So we'll just, um, we recorded it so we know who's here. So we'll still keep you guys um, on the attendance sheet as well. We'll just update it on our own.